So much for joining us for this evening's performance at the Millennium Stage. Tonight we present the treasures from the Archive Rove Show, featuring the Downhill Strugglers and John Cohen. Please welcome them to the stage. Hi, greetings. Oh, you all showed up. Hello. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Eli Smith. I'll be kind of the MC tonight. I'm here with uh, my string band, the Downhill Strugglers, featuring John Cohen. And we're here with our good friend, Jaron Paxton. And we're here to present to you the uh, treasures from the Archive Road Show that we've been touring around with around the country. And it uh, celebrates the folk music collections at the Library of Congress. We'll be performing. Uh, there at the Library of Congress uh, tomorrow as well at noon. And this is kind of a way for us to bring the great wealth of uh, American folk music that, that's housed at uh, the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress out to the general public because otherwise sometimes it gets lost there in the archives and we're all so excited about uh, the music that we've learned there that we wanted to bring it out to all of you. Um, so thank you for coming and uh, we're, we're going to get started with our show. Actually, this is a tune that Charles Seeger recorded in West Virginia way back in the 30s and put it into the Library of Congress. That's where we learned it. Na dropping names, isn't it? <laughs> but dropping tunes. You guys ready? We'll find out. <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, and uh, now we'd like to do a, another band number. We're kind of going to mix it up and do some pieces together as a group and also uh, play some, some solo music for you. So we'll do another band number now called Oh Mary, Don't You Weep, Don't You Moan. Probably everybody knows that. It's a famous, uh, famous gospel song recorded in many, many variations there in the collections at the Library of Congress. Um, we'll be doing a lot of... Um, pretty straight renditions from the field recordings that we learned from, but also bringing you some of our own arrangements, or as we like to call them, derangements. <laughs> um, I'm curious as to what you mean by straight. Eh. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you weep. All right. <laughs> oh, sorry, let me get my picks up. I gotta get a pick. Sorry. Is it in G or the other key? The other one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now of course the banjo show. players are never really quite ready. You gotta know which key you're at. Dare I no, count in again? Back to the right. Yeah, I'll count down from ten next time. One, two, three. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, we're going to feature Walker Shepard on, on the next piece as we move into the solo portion here. And I guess what I meant by straight was uh, when I said we would play it straight, that's just the, in, a, in, a, in the same or a similar style to the recording that we might have learned this from, the old field recording or whatever it may be. Um, you can kind of make a choice about how much you want to change something from the way that you first heard it. And the way I think about it is that somebody sang into a microphone and they made a recording of it and we heard the recording and that person who sang came into us. I feel very connected to the, with the Library of Congress records there's no, no, no big um, special effects or commercial effects. You just hear real voices, American voices and it means the world to me. And uh, Walker's good as there's a, a old ballad that uh, is very common in the mountains. Uh, and uh, this was recorded by Alan Lomax. It's called the Eastern 
Virginia Blues. <laughs> yeah, that's the right thing. Well, I was born. North Carolina, I did run. Was there I caught some failure? Woman. What was her age? I did not know. Well, now we'll switch to the other side of the stage here, to my, to my right, uh, Jerron Paxton. What, what, what do you got for him? I got music. All right. <laughs> I hope you like it. If you don't, pat your foot and pretend you do. That's respectful, you understand. <clears throat> I'm going to play a song by... Uh, that was recorded by one of the most famous people from the Library of Congress. That's Mr. Hughie Ledbetter, otherwise known as Lead Belly. Uh, Lead Belly is mu uh, music made a big hit. If you are of the baby boomer generation, you no doubt heard him. Even while I was born way back in South Central Los Angeles, we played musical chairs to Lead Belly records. And, uh, yeah, till, till you stop playing musical chairs. We didn't dance to this song, however. The, the, the ladies that educated me back home, they were saved, sanctified, you understand. Or as my grandma say, highfalutin. <laughs> and they, uh, they hated every time I said the word moonshine. But I could get away with this song because all I was singing about was sweet old green corn. Nobody know that corn don't come in a jar, and, and, but that's the best way to get it. Green cone, green cone. 
come get Charlie. Green cone, green cone, don't tell Polly. Green cone, green cone, green cone, green cone. Green cone, green cone, come along, Charlie. Green cone, green cone, don't tell Polly. Green cone, green cone, come along, Charlie. Green cone, green cone. Oh, wake, baby, days breaking. Feeding pot and whole cakes baking. Green cone, green cone, green cone, green cone. Green cone, green cone, come along, Charlie. Green cone, green cone, don't tell Polly. Green cone, green cone, come along, Charlie. Green cone. Well, all I want. This creation, little bitty wife, big plantation. Two little boys call me Papa. One name Papa, one name Baby. One name Sop, one name Gravy. One gon' put up the other, gon' stay with green corn, green corn, green corn, green corn. Stand around, stand around, Dimmy John. 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 Green corn, green corn, green corn. Green corn. Wake up, baby, day is breaking. Peace and pot and whole cake baking. Green corn, green corn, green corn, green corn. Green corn, green corn, come along, Charlie. Green corn, green corn, come play Wally. Green corn, green corn, come along, Charlie. Green corn, green corn, green corn, green corn, green corn, green corn. Stand around, stand around, Dimmy John. 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 Green corn, green corn. Band you walk, band you talk, band you eat with a knife and a fork. Oh, green corn, green corn, green corn, green corn. Stand around, stand around, Dimmy John. 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 Green corn. Green corn, woods is wet, roads is muddy. I'm so drunk till I can't stand steady. Oh, green corn, green corn, green corn, green corn. White moon, white moon, sandy ride. Green corn won't let you die. Oh, green corn, green corn. Stand around, stand around, Dimmy John. 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 play a, a rag now called Stone's Rag, and we're going to play it all together. I, think so. I guess the, uh, the way that this fits into this Library of Congress show, and I, I actually the first way that I heard this song was on a old record of live recordings from the Newport Folk Festival in the, in the 1960s, and uh, John Cohen's band of many, many years, the New Lost City Ramblers, played it at, uh, at Newport Folk Festival. So I think that, that must have been the first time I heard this tune. And all those tapes of the live recordings uh, from Newport are, are now there in the, in the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. So this is legit. That's why we can play it for you now.
on drag. Thank you. Thanks. So take a moment while I retune this banjo. One thing about uh, uh, old-time string band music or rural banjo music and before bluegrass, in, in case you're wondering, we're, we're actually not playing bluegrass. <laughs> uh, we're playing uh, different names. <laughs> what? Oh, no. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Uh, um, often called old time music. It was even called old time music in the old times, <laughs> showing you how old old it is. But um, it's interesting because we had to use the name old time because we didn't want to use the word folk because we didn't know what it meant anymore. Now you all know, but we don't. Uh, well, I'd like to sing you a song now that has a few different names. Buffalo Skinners is one of them. And it was um, first, I, was, I believe it was first collected and published in that form by John Lomax, a great folklorist, father of Alan Lomax, also a great folklorist, and published, I think, in 1908 in his first book of cowboy songs uh, and recorded in numerous uh, variations, a wonderful version that John recorded of a uh, a musician named Roscoe Holcomb in Kentucky. He, he called it Hills of Mexico, I think. Um, so we'll try a version of Buffalo Skinners now. Bound for San Francisco in 1883. When a well known cowboy come walking up to me, How do you do, young fellow, and how'd you like to go and spend a summer pleasant on the range of the buffalo? Well, my being out of work right then to the drover, I did say. It's according to your wages and according to your pay. I will pay good wages and transportation too. If you'll agree to work for me, the range of the buffalo. I will pay good wages and transportation too. You'll agree to work for me until the season's through. But if you should grow homesick and try to run away, and starve to death out on the trail and also lose your pay. With all that flattering talking, he signed up for the train. Ten or twelve in number and able-bodied men. And our trip it was a pleasant one as we hit the westward road. Until we reached Old Boggy Creek on the range of the buffalo. Was there our pleasures ended and our troubles all begun. Lightning storm, it hit us and made the cattle run. Got all full of stickers and the cactus that didn't grow. And the outlaws waiting to pick us off on the range of the buffalo. The working season ended and the drover would not pay. You went drunk too much, now you're all in debt to me. But the cowboys never had heard of such a thing as a bankrupt law. So they left the drover's bones to bleach on the range of the buffalo. It's actually a song about 
um, a poor understanding of bankruptcy law. Well, uh, this next song is kind of brings a lot of things together for me. It's a song that I recorded from a wonderful old singer, a banjo player down in, in North Carolina, and I was doing some f field recordings trying to find out what they were growing in the fields and how it affected them. And, uh, and uh, his, his name was George Landers. And then my recordings were acquired recently by the Library of Con Congress. Almost everything I've done is sitting there in the files of the Library of Congress. So if you want to look at them, go look at them. And if you want to, you don't have to have a library card to use the Library of Congress. This March, and you've paid for it already with your taxes. And it's, there's librarians there willing to help you with anything. The last time I was there, there was a woman researching murder ballads and all these People were bringing her murder ballads, and uh, that was good. If you're interested in something like murder ballads, <laughs> just go there. Uh, no, I, st I started listening to Library of Congress records when I was 16 years old, and that's a while ago. And maybe that's what inspired me to go out and do some collecting on my own. finger I know there's a pain all in my toe there's a pain all in my true love side where somebody has fooled her I know all the rolling mills are burning down all the rolling mills are burning down all the rolling mills are burning down plumb down to the ground and they'll never build Well, thank you. Uh, we'll have uh, one more uh, solo number, and we'll do another band one after that. Um, now we'd like to feature Jackson Lynch. Uh, he's going to play some, some fiddle for you. And uh, what do you have in mind this uh, evening, Jackson? I'm going to sing a, <clears throat> an old uh, cowboy song called The Roving Cowboy. I think uh, all the people waiting to get into the opera house 
I have no idea what's going on over here. Grand old. Somebody told me that that's how it got the name, is that the WSM Barn Dance was on the radio after the, o uh, after the Grand Opera, and the announcer said, well, this is, this is the Grand Old Opry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think about that song that I just sang. I was a little old man, George Lander, sitting in his very simple, small cabin way back in the in the hills in North Carolina, and I'm looking down this hallway here, I say, oh my God, and it's just <laughs> traveled so far, or maybe it didn't travel at all. I wish he could have seen this.
pictures. Um, all right, well, we'll do another band piece now. We'll get all tuned up. Um, I guess when I, I got on a tangent before about bluegrass, but what I was going to say was that in, uh, in old-time music, it's, uh, it's, very, it's idiosyncratic music. There's a lot of different tunings to uh, obtain different, uh, you might call them atmospheres. It's, 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 it's a subtle... Um, it's a subtle distinction, but but very beautiful. We are playing Little Bridges. Okay. And the name of this tune is Leather Bridges. We're from New York, so we know a lot about leather bridges. Different leather bridges, though. Leather, what are leather bridges? <laughs> leather bridges uh, is what they used to wear when they didn't have suede suits. But leather breeches is the, also what they call little beans that they hang up on the side of a cabin because they have that kind of shape like a pair of leather breeches. And if you know that, it doesn't make any difference to the tune, but if you know it, <laughs> it makes life a little richer. <coughs> Two fiddles. Two fiddles. One banjo. Ooh.
uh, Jackson and Walker on the fiddles over there. Uh, well, we're going to do a few more uh, solos here, or another band number or two, depending on how the time goes. Uh, it's, it goes by one uh, number at a time. It's great to be here with, with all of you. Uh, again, we're the, we're the Downhill Strugglers. We're here from New York uh, with Jerron Paxton, also here from New York. And uh, we're playing at the Library of Congress tomorrow at the Coolidge Auditorium at noon. What's, uh, what's up? Mo Music. I'm playing a song by Mr. Hughie Ledbetter, Ledbetter, the star. He's from about 30 minutes away from where my grandma was born. They was born on separate plantations. I don't think Ledbetter was born on the plantation. I think that was, uh, I think that was his family's land until uh, certain government officials got involved. Uh, this song comes a good, a uh, longer way away from uh, where my family's from, and this song comes from New Orleans. It's an instrumental number, rendered by Mr. Johnny St. Cyr. Alan Lomax, uh, was it John Allen, the younger one? The younger one was Allen. That's right. Alan had a little aversion to jazz music. I think his father did too. Said it was ruining the good folk music. So uh, Jelly Roll Morton was rolling around, I think somewhere around here, around DC. And he says, well, I guess I better record this old dude. And people think he's important. I don't care too much about jazz music. He got a little bee in his bonnet about it and said, I'll ask Mr. Jazz, do he know a folk song? I'll ask him to play Alabama Bound. That Miss Lomax cuts on the recording de uh, uh, record cutter and says, Hello, Jelly. Uh, do you know Alabama Bound? And Jelly Roll Morton says, I wrote Alabama Bound in 1901. So it tells you... Folk music, whether rural or urban, is folk music. After he fell in love with uh, Jelly Roll Morton, which you can tell their love was strong because they talked to each other for eight hours on record, <laughs> and God knows how long off record. After Jelly had died in 19, Jelly died in 41, in 47 he went back he went to Louisiana and recorded a bunch of members of the jazz scene around there. One of them was Jelly's banjoist, Mr. Johnny St. Cyr. Johnny was everybody's favorite banjo player in New Orleans. Every orchestra from King Oliver, Louis Armstrong and his hot fives and hot sevens, Jelly Roll Morton and his red hot peppers, they all had Johnny St. Cyr as their favorite accompanist. And the pitiful thing is he never took one solo. Took a piece of one here and there, but never too much. Brother Lomax sat down with Johnny St. Cyr in his house and got to hear the man by himself. And Lomax asked uh, Johnny St. Cyr, what did music sound like when you was learning? Uh, he said, well, when I, when I was about 12 years old, 192, he gives a story about who he learned from. And he says, this is what guitar music sounded like at that time. Thank you. 
got some music fans in the audience. <laughs> Well, I think we have uh, time for, for about two more here. We're gonna we're gonna feature uh, John Cohen here is gonna gonna play one with with Walker on guitar, and then we'll have a time for a time for a final band number. Uh, I'd like to mention that there's uh, a few things that I do in New York that you all might like to be aware of if you're uh, interested in this kind of music. I, I put on the the Brooklyn Folk Festival in Brooklyn there. Uh, every spring and the Washington Square Park Folk Festival uh, in the fall, which just, just happened or in September. And uh, there's a wonderful venue in New York, the Jalopy Theater, kind of the home for this music in New York City right now there at the Jalopy Theater. Uh, so come visit us in New York. Look, uh, come look us up, the Downhill Strugglers, Jerron Paxton, and uh, we're here and there. What do you, what do, what do you guys, what do you guys got? What's next? Uh, I got an older in the last minute. Uh, every, no, I got an old song called The Cuckoo Bird. I've been playing it for many, many years and learned it from a wonderful old guy named Clarence Ashley. And when I'm just listening to the range of music here and thinking about the Library of Congress, I guess America has a lot of good music going. It just makes me feel good about it for a change. <laughs>
often have wondered what makes women love men. And I look back and I wonder what makes men love them. All the cuckoo is a pretty bird, and I wish that she was mine. She never drank water, she don't even drink wine. All the cuckoo is a pretty bird, she wobbles. And she flies, she don't ever call her cuckoo till the fourth day she lies. Well, uh, thank you all again, and thank you so much um, to the Kennedy Center for having us here. It's a big honor to play here, and um, we sure appreciate it. And uh, thank you for listening to this presentation of the Treasures from the Archive Roadshow, celebrating the folk music collections at the Library of Congress, uh, where we will be playing tomorrow, which, is, which we're also very much looking forward to. If, you, uh, are, if you're interested by any of this music that you're hearing, Please check out check out the Library of Congress, the American Folklife Center. It's uh, it's not far from here. It's it's easy to go there and avail yourselves of all the wonderful music that you can hear there. And if um, if that fails, you could look them up on the internet. Uh, and give my regards to Todd, Todd Harvey. He's a wonderful addition to the library. And everybody else, Betsy, all of them. They're real good people down there. Did you? All right. So as our last number, we're going to play an old breakdown called Katie Hill. <laughs> All right. And, and we, we uh, the Downhill Strugglers and John Paxton... We have some CDs for sale, I almost forgot to mention. If you'd like to pick up uh, any of our CDs, they'll be at the table in the back there af after the show here.
Thank you. Thanks a lot.